This is problem number four on uh, the practice test for uh, test number three in CSCI 202. And um, we have some code here that needs to be uncommented, so let's uncomment it. So the instructions say we need to write a function called read players. It's going to be a void function. And we don't know how many items are going to be in the input file. So we set count equal to zero, and it's a reference uh, variable. So it will get changed in read players. If there are five players out there, this will have five in it when we come back. If uh, there are ten players, this will have number ten in it when we come back. Okay. So we're going to pass in the array. Uh, the, the array has been declared for us, and memory has been set aside for 50 elements in the array. But that is only memory for 50 pointers to baseball players. And what we're going to have to do in the function is we're going to have to set aside that memory for each baseball player as we read it. So uh, that part may not be obvious, but uh, let's go ahead and, and give it a try. So it's going to be uh, static void, and it's going to be called read players. And we're going to pass in the baseball player array. One dimensional array, and I'm going to call it the same thing here. And we're going to pass in a reference variable. It's going to be an int, and we'll call that count just like we did before. Okay. So, what do we have to do here? Uh, we have to read in some lines of text. Uh, and the one thing we haven't done before, and this will not be on the final, but um, what I probably should have done is told you ahead of time how many lines there were out there in the file. And what the file looks like is uh, this. So it's three lines of text, and we've got uh, a player name in the first 20 columns. We, the next 15 columns have the team. Then we got four columns for the uh, hits, and then four columns for the at-bats. So uh, we need to be able to read in that as a string, and then um, use substring to separate them out. So, so we're going to need a file. And a file is a stream reader, input file. So that's in the appropriate folder, the default folder inside of my project, so I don't have to put any path information in front of it. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a while loop, and we'll just do our basic infinite while loop. We'll say true. And then obviously inside someplace we have to have an if statement that says it's time to quit. So what do I want to do in every pass through here? What I want to do is I want to uh, read a line. So it's going to be a string. And the name of the file is file.readline. Uh, okay. So at this point, if I am on my first pass through the loop, then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have this text right here is all going to be in one string, and I need to use substring to pick it apart. Okay, so that's going to be relatively straightforward. I'm going to have a string variable called name. Uh, let's call it player name so it matches. And it's going to be a substring of line uh, starting at zero, and it's going to be 20 characters long. Uh, I got to use substring. And I'm going to have another string called team. That's going to be another substring of line. It's going to start at column 20, and it's going to be 15 characters long. Then we have an integer variable called hits. That's going to be a substring. It's going to start in column 35, and it's going to be four characters long. Now we got a problem there. That returns a string, and I need an integer, so we'll convert it in a minute. I've also got another one we're going to have the same problem with. It's at bats. It's going to be line dot substring, and it's going to start at column 39, and it's going to take up uh, four characters as well. Okay. So if you want to convert a string into an integer, what you have to do is you have to do the convert. And we're always going to do uh, int 32. That's a 32-bit integer, which is the default for integers in C-sharp. Okay. 
So I have just taken one line representing one player and I have taken that line and then I have split it up into its four components. Now if I put spaces in between those, uh, I could have used a split command, which uh, would have been just one command instead of four. So now I've got all four things. All I need to do is put it in the correct spot in the array. So the name of my array is players, and the position I'm at is going to be indicated by the count variable. So I want to go to players at that position, and you have to allocate the player now. So if you don't do that, uh, you'll get an error. So baseball player, and it needs to be new. We're creating one here, so i got to put the word new in front. And then I've got to pass in my arguments. And the constructor we wrote says you have to pass in a player name, a team, a number of hits, and a number of at-bats. So uh, we're going to pass in uh, the four variables that we created above here. Uh, team, uh, hits, at bats, and then we need to move our counter along, otherwise we'll just put everything in position zero. And when we get all done, we need to check for when we get done, because we've got an infinite loop here. And there's a way to tell that you're done with reading a file in C Sharp, and that is if, if you're reading a stream file anyway, if, uh, give the name of the file, dot peak, and if that is less than zero, uh, it means we're at the end of the file. So, and, you know, uh, it will always return a negative number when you have run out of data in the file, when you've read the last line. So that should get us out. Uh, we've got show players in here, which will take the players we've read, and it will print them out. So if we go back and look at our file here, uh, we should get three lines of output, Babe Ruth, Ted Williams, and Mickey Mantle. So let's go ahead and run that. And at the end, we get Babe Ruth, Ted Williams, and Mickey Mantle. Um, the characters, or the fields, had spaces on the end. So we've got this extra stuff here, and then our slashes. Uh, it's doing everything correctly. The only thing we'd have to do to make that a little cleaner is um, when we read the player name, do dot trim. And same thing, we read the team name. Okay, so now let's give it a go. Okay, and now we don't have all that extra uh, white space in there, or in this case, black space. So that demonstrates passing an array as a parameter to a function uh, using a reference variable, uh, using a stream reader. Uh, on the test, I will not ask you to do this. I will probably, if I have you read from a file, uh, I'll tell you how much stuff is in the file, and you can use a for loop. Okay. And if I get time, I may go back and uh, redo this problem uh, using, instead of using substring to pick everything apart, using uh, the split method uh, to split everything apart. Uh, that requires reformatting the input file to get rid of all the, um, the commas and basically just put white space uh, in between, and uh, or maybe putting commas in between everything and, and not having white space. But, um, but this is one way to do it, and this is relatively straightforward. It's just a few more lines of code than if we use split.